All right, let's get started. What are we doing tonight? So tonight, we're gonna lube up some KBD fans T1 switches. Yeah, that. KBD fans T1. I don't have a lot of time, so we're gonna do this somewhat quickly. Before we get started, I wanna demonstrate something that I think is pretty important. Um, the noises that you can get from your springs and other parts of the switch if you don't lube them. And uh, so not everybody lubes their springs, hopefully by now most people do, but let me show you a stock T1 switch where the spring hasn't been lubed. Let me hold this up to the microphone so you can hear the kind of spring noises you'll get. So hopefully you could hear those high pitched noises. Now, most of those are probably coming from the spring. So typical solution to that that people will do is they'll take some kind of a lube. This is like a thick PTFE, like a Krytox style lube. And so typically you'll see people lube up the spring real good. And uh, this generally silences that kind of noise. So there's a couple different kinds of noises. There's a sort of like a, like a noise that you hear the spring making while you're pushing the switch down or releasing it. Like as the, as the stem is moving, you'll hear a noise. Even if you move the switch slowly, you'll hear that noise. It's like a creaking sound. That's uh, typically solved by lubing the ends of the springs. And uh, But then this, the noise I was demonstrating a second ago is more like the spring kind of like ringing out, almost like a bell um, at bottom out and at top out. And so that's why I lube the entire spring because it seems to me like having that extra substance of, of grease on the spring itself helps it not ring, helps it vibrate. It's kind of like if you have a bell, if you like uh, put your hand on the bell, it stops ringing. Uh, similarly, like if you smeared a bunch of grease all over the bell, it wouldn't ring very well either. So I think most of the sound is gone, is gonna be gone now that I put some nice thick grease on this spring. But you might notice the tiniest bit of ringing left. Yeah, at bottom out. Okay, notice at, at bottom out. Hopefully you heard it. So interesting thing about that little noise is I don't think that's coming from the spring because I greased that thing up pretty good and I don't think it's ringing so in my experience I think some of that noise is coming from something else I think it's actually coming from the leaf I think the leaf can ring as well I bottom out so sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a little blob of grease here on the leaf with my little grease syringe and uh, well, let's just see what happens when we do that. Because if the leaf is ringing, greasing it up should quiet it. Let's see. Yep, it's gone. So, no metallic ringing noises whatsoever after doing those steps. So, I think that last one, putting the blob of grease on the leaf, I haven't seen anyone else do that, so hopefully that'll be helpful if you're, if you're getting some noises, even after you've lubed your springs, could be coming from the leaf. Some leaves are louder than others, I noticed, especially the V2 Zeals louder. Uh, V2 Zeal leaves seem to be louder than some other switches, 
and I think the T1 leaves are a little on the loud side as well. They have a lot in common with the V2 zeal. Hi, not Zesty Salsa. Have I tried GPL 105? I actually haven't. No, I haven't tried GPL 105. I have some, uh, what do I have? I think I have some 106. And I've tried 1514. But my tastes tend to gravitate towards the thicker stuff. Um, I'll have to try it one of these days, get my hands on some. But no, I haven't tried 105. So I'm going to get started getting these switches out and start lubing them. And I want to show the way I lube the springs as well. Now recently I've been hearing about the um, paraffinic oil that TX provides with their springs. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So I tried something that was kind of a failed experiment. I tried this uh, spray chain wax that has paraffin in it. It's a paraffin based lube. It sprays on and then it, uh, well, I'll show you. I'll, I'll spray a little right here and you'll see what it turns out like. So it goes on liquid and it dries kind of like a thin wax. So I thought maybe that would cling to the springs because it claims to cling really well to like motorcycle chains. And uh, what I want with the lube for springs is I want something that's going to stay on the spring. It's not going to leak down into the bottom of the switch or just it's not going to just leak down into the pan that I'm using to lube my springs or whatever. So I want something that's going to stick. So I had high hopes for this paraffin kind of a lube. But for some reason, when I tried it, it didn't work as well as the stuff that I've already been using. So I count that as kind of a, I don't know that it worked poorly, but it just, I didn't, it didn't cling, not enough of it clung to the spring. So maybe I'll try another, another paraffin based lube. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they got a lot of cool keyboard shops in Japan, I've heard. I'd love to go there someday. Those guys have all kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> it's one of the coolest places on earth. Got all kinds of great keyboards and tech and media. So you've got Helios, Zelios. Oh, I like that that uh, AIO three switch opener because you got your you got your uh, latch style opener and your MX style opener both. That's awesome. It's super cool. I might actually pick one of those up one of these days. I haven't gotten around to it. I mean, I haven't had a pressing need because I've been using my 3D printed opener for the latch style switches. And it works okay, but it's plastic. So every once in a while I have to kind of refinish the sharp edges of it because they get blunted after a while. So the AIO3 opener would be really cool for that. I use this little guy, this Keyboss. It works great for MX switches, but it doesn't, you know, do do me any good on the latch style. So that AIO3 looks like a great option. That one, uh, they've got it on KBD fans, so that's probably where I'd get it. Um, so, does the shop in Japan, if I may ask, are they uh, getting their stock from KBD fans, or or is there is KBD fans just uh, are they get like, I don't know who, like, actually manufactures the opener and where, if it's a KVD fans product or if it's just something that someone else can stock. Hmm. Oh, uh, so T1s, so far, I think are really good. I really like them a lot. Um, however, I wouldn't exactly call them replacements for the V2 Zeals. Um, they feel different. So I think it depends on what you're going for. Um, so the the V2 Zeals have a like a more drawn out bump. Like after you you get over the peak of the bump, it feels like the other side of the bump kind of tapers off more slowly on the Zeals. Whereas the the uh, T1s to me feel like pretty much the same kind of a like a sharper bump compared to the v2 zeals so the to me the t1s feel more similar to a holy pandas bump they feel like to me like a slightly weaker holy panda bump just barely 
whereas the, the V2 Zeals don't don't feel like a holy panda to me. They feel like their own beast. They've got that uh, kind of really stretched out bump. It's like the the more drawn out. It's even more drawn out than the than holy panda bump. So that's kind of interesting. I think I slightly prefer I slightly prefer the feel of the V2 Zeals, but I mean it's not a it's it's not like a, a huge difference, you know, it's a really subtle difference. I think it, it's kind of hard to argue with the price of the T1s. So the biggest thing about the T1s, um, almost everything seems really nice to me about the T1s. Like I like the, the, the level of tactility is really good, I think. It's, they're, they're pretty tactile but not over the top. They're almost as tactile as Holy Pandas. Uh, the bump shape feels really similar to Holy Pandas. They're very smooth. The spring that they come with is very good. Um, yeah, it's a good spring. Um, it's just the kind of nitpicky thing about them is they're, they're pretty loud. And Based on my little bit of experimentation with a few of them, uh, I think that lubing's gonna solve that. I don't think that'll really be very loud after lube, but we'll see. Uh, other than that, uh, as you see, this is a hot swap keyboard, so <laughs> this is my keyboard I like to test switches in, so I don't have to spend tons of time on the switch swapping every time I try a new switch. Because, you know, I like to see how they sound lube. First, I like to see how they sound without lube. Then see how they sound with lube. So you know how hard that would be if I had to desolder every time. I could do it. You know, I got the desoldering gun. Cool, well, uh, have a good night. Uh, maybe we can... Check out the typing test when I'm done. I'll, the typing test will be on YouTube, so you don't have to watch the whole video to see that the end result. <laughs> All right. So those are the 65% worth. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do all 90, or maybe like 89 or 88. need a drink for this. Okay, let me think here. Let me set up my assembly line here. So over here I'm gonna put the springs, I guess. Move my drink. This is my test switch that I already lubed, so I'll just set this one aside. I'm gonna see, you know, make sure I liked how the lube method was gonna turn out. So let's see here. I'm gonna go bases. I guess I'll put the bases directly into the mod station. Save a step as I take them apart. I'll go straight into the mod station. So let's bring the stems and the tops. Let's see how we go. Second here. Just keep grabbing my container. All right, container for the stems. Bases will go here. Springs will go there. I just need one more container for the top. Something special. Just, just do a soul, red soul cup for that. Alright. Time for some tedium. Let's see. Top stem. Wait, I want to make sure this is dry first.
Now you need to make sure you're using quality stuff here, so make sure you have like your genuine Disney branded stuff, okay? Because it'll work better. Trust me. You don't want to use just any cartoon branding for your nice keyboard builds. Need to be more careful. Hey anyway, mate, let's do it. So springs, I'm gonna go ahead and place my springs in an orderly fashion as I go along. And you'll see why. I haven't done this particular method before laying it out like this, so it'll take me a minute to get used to it. Should I play some music? Maybe I should play some music. That's what everyone else does on their streams. Don't really want to though. I think I'll skip it. The thing is, I don't, I don't understand why everyone likes to play music in their streams because if I'm watching a stream, I would rather have the option of listening to my own music rather than whatever happens to be on the stream. So I think for the lube that I'm going to use tonight, I think I'll go ahead and use this, uh, everyone's talking about the crystal lube lately, so I think I'll use a crystal lube MCG 112. Now some people are saying that the 129 might be a little bit better, but it's also thicker. Well, the thing about that is these switches, you might be surprised to hear this, or you might not be, but uh, if you've uh, had some experience with this stuff, you'll probably know that uh, you don't always lube for smoothness. Sometimes, such as in the case of these switches, the switch is already really smooth. So you're primarily lubing for sound. And that's what I'm doing. These switches, if I'm honest, they don't need lube for smoothness. They're very smooth already. I don't think the lube is going to really do a lot to the smoothness. They're so smooth already. But it will do a lot for the sound. As you'll see. If you listen to the before and after, I posted a video of the typing test. Uh, I posted a typing test before I did anything to the switches. And I'm I mean I can't see the future, but I'm I'm like a hundred percent sure they're gonna sound better after I loop them. <laughs> Even though I've never lubed these particular switches. I've lubed enough switches though to know that. They're definitely going to sound cool with lube. They're going to sound better. I, some people told me they actually like how they sound stock. Me? No, not really. I'm not crazy about how they sound stock, but you know, that's cool, whatever. Everyone has different preferences. But... Just to be fair, I thought I would mention that some people really like how they sound already. Even stock. It'll be interesting to see if those people like how they sound even better after I lube them.
I'm gonna move the mic a little farther away while I'm doing this stuff so you don't have to hear me breathing and stuff These switches are kind of a surprise, a uh, pleasant surprise to me. I wasn't expecting a lot. I wasn't expecting much from these switches. I just thought, they're the new thing, I gotta try them. It'll be fun to try something new. They'll probably not be that great. You know, I've got other switches that are awesome. These probably won't hold a candle to them. You know, KVD fans, the first time releasing their own Switch, yada yada. But then I got them, and I tried them, and I was like, whoa, wait a second, these are these are nice. Now, these are the second, uh, I, I don't know if you would say the second batch, but uh, they're not the first batch, I know that much. The first batch that people bought had uh, sometimes as much as a 50% rate of failure where up, up to half of the switches were bad and the problem with them is that they would chatter so the reason they would chatter is there was some kind of defect involving the leaf in the switch so fortunately I didn't order that early so these are the ones that have been fixed whatever was wrong at the factory that made them chatter has been fixed since then so these I actually had a 100% success rate with these. You know, the first 68 or whatever that I grabbed to put in my keyboard, none of them were bad. None of them chattered. So, whatever it was that they did wrong at the factory, they corrected it. So that's good. Good to hear. Good news. Whatever they screwed up, you unscrewed it up. Honestly though, these springs are these are good springs. I'm really quite impressed with these springs. I shouldn't hype them up too much. I mean they're not like magic. And they still need to be lubed if you want them to be really utterly silent but gosh I mean I think they're just as good as Sprit as far as I can tell and Sprit is supposed to be like the best springs so far anyway I don't think anyone's anyone else has really surpassed Sprit in spring quality so far quality and consistency And you might ask, why the heck am I lubing 90 switches or or 89? I think I think I have like 89 or 88 here, but uh, why am I lubing enough for TKL if I'm putting them in a 65? Well, that's because I'm putting them in a 65 for now, but later they might actually end up in a TKL. So that this 65 is kind of my test keyboard, testing and recording, typing tests and stuff like that. So. That's why. So I might actually need 90. I rarely ever build anything. I mean, I should say really rarely. Like once ever so far. Only once have I ever built a keyboard bigger than a TKL. So usually if I, if I don't know what I'm going to do with the switches, 90 is a safe bet. Because I, I, can, I can be pretty sure that I'm not going to need more than 90. And, uh... The one that I built that was bigger than a 90 switch keyboard was a 
It was an 1800 size keyboard that I bought off Taobao for really cheap. It was a little bit cheaper than a KBD-19X even. And gosh, I love that keyboard. Wow. It was, uh, I mean, it's kind of chunky. It's not refined, but, you know, it's kind of a basic design, but it has a big old brass weight in it and a brass plate. And it sounds beast. It looks beast. It's got uh, PCB is nice. It's got underglow. Just a really cool keyboard for the price. Man, I was really happy with that Taobao purchase. So. And it's top mount. <laughs> it's just a really nice keyboard. If you look at my channel, I have a video of the entire build of that keyboard. So if you want to know more about it, everything you could possibly want to know is there on my channel or if you message me I'll tell you about it but I don't know if they're still selling it because someone else from the top clack discord as he goes by the nickname UB he uh, tried to order one and I think they canceled his order and said that they that it wasn't in production anymore or something like that so they asked oh I remember what it was they said the color that he requested wasn't available, and they asked him if he wanted to try requesting a different color, so I guess they, so he said no, he wanted that color, he wanted the color he asked for, so they cancelled his order. So that's a bummer. So I'm not sure if they're still making them for that reason, I'm not sure if they're still making them or if they just made made a batch of them and they're just selling the ones they have or what. I did a weird thing with that keyboard. <laughs> it was kind of a, an accident. I sort of, when I ordered it, you're supposed to send them a, a like a direct message on Ali Wang Wang Messenger. It's the Chinese messenger that uh, Taobao uses to contact the sellers. And uh, I kind of forgot to message them telling them what color I wanted. Because that's how you're supposed to tell them. There's like a top, a middle piece, and a bottom piece, all made out of aluminum and all anodized. So there's like three different parts you can request the color to be a particular color. So I was just like nervous about that. I'm thinking, man, I know this company does does the group buys. I know they they have like limited production runs, and I know that they they uh, if you request some color that's not popular, you're you might end up waiting for months and months, and you might not even, your order might get canceled like that friend of mine you be. So, I just didn't say what color I wanted. And they never asked me, and they just sent me, so they ended up sending me the color combination that was in the pictures, in the listing. So that, I guess that was like, kind of like their default color scheme or something. So, so the good thing is, I'm actually happy with that color combination so it's totally fine but uh, I just for that price seemed like such a good deal and I didn't want my order to cancel I didn't want anything to go wrong and I know these guys this particular seller it's the same factory that makes counterfeits of uh, percent keyboards like they make a fake canoe they make a fake scog um, and I know they're I think that they, they seem to be kind of, uh, I don't know, like you don't want to tick them off or they'll cancel your order because I've heard stories of other people who try to order something from them and months went by without any updates and they, they started asking, hey, what's going on? And they started sort of like pestering this manufacturer to, hey, you need to tell me what's going on with my order. And so the manufacturer's like, yeah. Just can't. I'll just ref give you a refund, cancel your order, and give you a refund, rather than dealing with it. So that's why, you know, going into this is like this was like the second keyboard I bought from them, and the first keyboard I bought from them, uh, I tried not to pester them too much, and it paid off. So, but it did take a really long time to get the keyboard. So. After I heard these stories of other people whose orders got canceled and stuff, I, I was just like, you know, I'm going to make it easy for them. Path of the least resistance, just, you know, 
give me whatever color combo you want basically I don't care I'll figure it out I'll find it I'll <laughs> figure out the key set later and the cool thing is it worked out really well because the combination they gave me was like black bottom gray top and red middle piece now the cool thing about that is I joined the GMK Hamon group by and I think with that red middle piece and the black bottom the gray top I think it's actually gonna look really cool with Hamon on it so I'm gonna put Hamon on that keyboard GMK Hamon Pusar GMK Hamon wait Pusar Poner Sorry, my Spanish is really rusty. Con, con, let's see. Con ese teclado voy a usar GMK jamón. Porque me gusta el color de rojo que utiliza. Uh, me gusta el sabor del jamón. Uh, Let's see here, we're almost done. Good, good, good. Almost done with this. This part's pretty tedious. Pretty boring too. Let's get on to business. I want to show you the weird way that I lube, so the sooner we get to that, the better. Because that's it. That's the part that's interesting. If you're really, if you're really uh, obsessed with the sound of your switches, like I know a lot of people are in the hobby, you really should lube your leaves the way that I lube them. Like you should do something to mass load them. Mass load them meaning something to add mass that clings to the part so that it's it's harder for it to resonate and ring like a bell. So. As I showed you, I already showed you that it makes a difference and uh, gets rid of that sound. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. A little drink. I'm going to go ahead and do that on all these switches. But first, before I do that, I just remembered. Let's not get things out of order here. First, I'm going to spray my springs because they take a while for the grease to set up so this is what I use I like this stuff because it clings to the springs and it makes them quiet I have to shake it and spray Now I'll set that aside. Now the stuff, when it first goes on, it's very liquidy, very thin. But then as the, uh, actually you can probably see. See the kind of a bubbling happening, sparkling. Looks like a sparkling bubbling. That's the uh, propellant evaporating. So, as the propellant evaporates, I guess the propellant thins it out. So when that stuff evaporates out, it gets thicker and more sticky. Kind of like a, not as sticky as Permatex, but you know, something like that. So that's good. That's what you want. So now I'm going to go ahead and grease each one of these leaves for the sake of the sound. Trust me, it really helps with that tiny little noise that you noticed. Not like a huge deal, but it's, I think it's enough that it's worth doing something about. I mean, this is a hobby where we put a lot of effort into getting that extra tiny improvement. So, it makes sense that if you have something, an extra step you can do that's going to make your switches quieter, then do it. It's consistent with what we do in this hobby.
Now this grease, in case you wonder, this is a PFPE based grease, so it's similar to a, like a Krytox 107, or sorry, it's like a Krytox 207, about, but it's not Krytox, it's from Taobao. It's like a Chinese grease. Hmm, some of these kind of didn't do the best job on. Okay, let me look here. These syringes are from Amazon. If anyone wants to know where I got them, I can give you a link. They're very handy for stuff like this. They're also really handy for doing stabs, you know, you can inject the grease to where it needs to go in the stabilizer. So this grease is thick enough and sticky enough that it's not likely to leak down or move too far. It's mostly going to stay in place, so that's good. That's what you want for this particular application. The other thing about this particular Chinese grease that I like is even though it's really thick, this one is not super sticky so that if you accidentally get a little on the stem it's not going to screw up your switch and make it feel all like super sluggish or anything like that. Um, if anybody wants to know the specifics, let me grab it and I'll show you which, what it is. This is the grease that I'm using for the leaves. I like it, it's good stuff. Runsai fluorine grease. Anyway, back to it. Got a lot of work left to do, so better get moving. And just, this might sound like common sense, but just a reminder to be gentle when you're doing this. If you do this, just be sure you don't bend your, your leaves. That would be bad. You might get chatter, you might get switches not registering. I just thought I'd mention that. As you can see, it's it's really not that much trouble to do this extra step, and it keeps your leaf from acting like a musical instrument, so that's good. Let's set these aside, take care of the stems. Next. Where did I put them? Oh, 
one sec. I need to clean the lid of this container that I'm using. The lid's going to be important. You'll see why in a sec. There's the lid. All right. Stems. All right. Now for the stems, let me get my... Ah! That was really bad. Okay. <laughs> Could have been worse, but uh, let's see. I hope I didn't lose any of these back behind or anything like that. I'll be more careful, huh? Now, something interesting about these uh, T1 switches, they have a factory lube. On them on um, what I see is that uh, just on the bump of the stem there's a little bit of what looks like an oil it's like a maybe it's like a, a 105 type of an oil like a sort of like a Crytox 105 maybe like a GPL 105 maybe so not enough though to make them sound good but probably helps the the uh, friction between the stem and the leaf feel smoother because you know that's plastic on metal so it definitely needs some lube and almost all switches a lot of people don't know this but almost all MX style switches come with some kind of factory lube on that piece right there where the where the stem rubs against the leaf that's kind of the norm so anyway Crystal Lube, MCG 112 is what I'm going to use tonight. I'm going to save the big guns for a different build because these switches already feel really smooth so I don't think they need like some crazy kind of smooth grease. Just mainly something to help with the sound. I'm just going to mix this in case there's any separation here. Hmm. This is thinner than I expected. Interesting. Well, that's good. So let's start with this amount. We'll see if it's a good amount. So the way I like to do it is I like to smear it on the sides of this container. Try to get it somewhat even. Now, keep in mind, the way that I lube, this is the first time I've used this container, so we're going to have more waste tonight. If I lube more switches with the same grease, I'll reuse the container and there'll be a lot less waste. So just keep in mind, the way that I lube is wasteful. Uh, of the lube, but it's less wasteful of your time than the alternative. So it's a trade-off. You know, in engineering we make trade-offs all the time. So it's just it's up to you whether it's worth it or not. If you want to conserve your lube, you would paint each stem carefully. But if you want to conserve your time, you can do this instead. So this is what I do. Now that's in there. First, I'll try to agitate it really fast. I'll alternate between agitating it really fast and and shaking it really hard. So fast looks like this. When I want to focus on shaking it harder, I'm trying to make the impact of the stems against the side of the container harder in hopes that uh, more of the lube will get flung into the little crevices. So this is what the fast looks like. This is what the hard looks like. Now this is actually really loud, so um, I have people sleeping here in the house, so I might have to do this outside. Now that I showed you the technique, I like to do it for a few minutes at least to uh, make sure that that uh, I have a, a uniform coating evenly spread everywhere so I want kind of a heavy coat on these stems and it's the first time I've used this container so there's more waste than usual so I'm gonna actually add more because I really want these switches to sound good 
and that typically more lube makes them sound better and I'm also not applying lube to the housing so generally I would apply lube to both the stem and the housing so I would apply lube to the housing using a brush and then I would use this agitation method or, or also known as tub lube to do the stems but since these switches are already very smooth the housing is made out of a very smooth kind of slippery material already I don't want to bother doing the housings this time and I actually did a test where I paintbrush lubed the housings and the stem and then on another switch I paintbrush lubed just the stem and I checked to see if there was a sound difference and I couldn't hear a difference so I think on these specific switches you can get away with just doing the stems so I'll be right back in a minute I'm gonna shake these for just a couple minutes outside so that I don't wake everyone up and I'm gonna have a little more of my drink I'll be right back done shaking the stems they look adequately lubed I'm gonna set them aside and see if the springs grease is, has set up enough let's see yeah nice and nice and tacky all right the springs are ready I'm going to put the springs onto the housings. So I'm going to use my tweezers. I like to carefully grab the end of the spring and place it on the peg. Easy peasy, right? Now these springs have a nice coat of this kind of sticky dielectric stuff on them so I hope they have enough actually I'm gonna do one thing before I place these springs just to be sure they have enough I think what I'll do is I'll let's see I think I'll just hmm you know what the grease is not really it's not as thickened up as I as it can be it's still a little bit on the thin side Hmm. Hmm. Because I don't want them to be under 
I don't want them to not have enough lube clinging to the springs because then they might not be completely silent. I might need to wait a little while. If I want to be sure about the good results. Let's see here. Well, actually, okay, I have an idea. So, let me build one switch with one of these springs. Let's see if it sounds like it has enough lube on the spring. If I don't hear any spring noise, then I'll assume that enough of the lube clung to the spring. So I'll just do one, see how it sounds. And decide whether to proceed based on that. can listen. I don't I don't hear the spring. I think we're good. I think we can go ahead with that. Let's see, does this one? Yeah. Yeah we're good. We can we can go ahead and move forward. It's set up enough. It's uh, sticking to the spring enough because I'm not hearing any spring noise, so it's all good. It's good because it's getting late. I want to get moving on this project and get it finished. <laughs> Try that again. Now, something to keep in mind, if you're an experienced luber, you probably have already thought of this, but if you're new to this, I just want to give you a disclaimer. If you lube the stems the way that I've done them, you'll be getting lube on the part of the stem that rubs against the leaf. Now, as I said earlier, there's already lube there, so why does it matter? Well, the reason it can matter 
is because the lube that we that we use in this hobby oftentimes is seems to be slicker than or sometimes it's just thicker than what the factory uses so sometimes the result is the friction between the bump on the stem where it rubs against the leaf sometimes that friction ends up being lower after you've lubed the stem if you lube it the way that I lubed it so that sounds like a good thing right well the only problem is uh, these are tactile switches so when you have less friction between the stem and the leaf it decreases the tactility a little bit so with these switches they're already pretty smooth and they already have a pretty good amount of factory lube so I don't think you're gonna lose much tactility if you get grease on the stem but you could lose it a little bit I'm not personally into like the extreme you know maximum tactility possible so to me it's okay if I lose a little bit of tactility it's not gonna bother me I actually might even like it better that way might even prefer them to be a little bit less tactile than stock but some people are chasing the maximum tactility that they can get so for those people you wouldn't want to lube the way that I lubed you would want to instead use a paintbrush and paint the parts of the stem that rub against the housing but you would skip painting the part that rubs against the leaf so I just thought I would mention that in case anyone wasn't aware One of these days I should make a, a video about lubing switches too, like with a paintbrush. But uh, I don't usually lube that way, so I don't know if I really should bother. But I have opinions about what's the best way to lube with a paintbrush too. <laughs> Basically, my opinion is that you should lube every part of the stem except for the part the keycap goes on <laughs> but uh, optionally you could skip lubing the part that rubs against the, the leaf I guess if you're trying to maximize tactility but you know I don't really I think people actually exaggerate how much tactility is lost there because a good quality switch is already gonna have lube there anyway so yeah you're gonna lose some it's not like gonna it's not gonna make it like a night and day difference is my point like if you have a switch that's not very tactile to begin with you might really have a problem if you do that like if you have like a like an alias switch it's not very tactile to begin with and you put some really good quality crytox lube on there where the stem rubs against the leaf okay you might have just made it so slippery that it feels like a linear but for most more tactile switches like these for example even if you lose a little tactility it's still gonna be uh, it's not gonna be like a huge night and day difference at least that's been my experience with other highly tactile switches like Zeals for example like my my uh, V2 Xylance I lubed the whole stem just like what I'm doing here tonight the whole damn thing and uh, lo and behold they still feel plenty tactile so I, I think it depends on the switch I think you can get away with it most of the time the biggest problem I haven't figured out a solution to really I mean it's not really a huge problem but it's just kind of an annoyance with uh, lubing the way that I lube these is that you get lube on the part that goes into your keycaps and also you waste some lube because it sticks to the sides of the container so neither of those things are ideal so the good, th the good news is that I haven't noticed any really any really practical problems with having lube 
on the cross where it connects to the keycap. Like I haven't noticed that the keys pop off or anything like that. No, it hasn't really affected the usability. So something like, uh, I feel like if you did this to someone's keyboard and they didn't know, they probably would never know. They probably would never find out if you didn't, unless they took the keycaps off and they saw the residue of the grease and they're like, whoa, what is this? But it's not like, you know, it's one of those things where people make a big deal about it, but honestly, like, show me the impact. Like, how does it affect you? How does it cause a problem? It doesn't. It's kind of like uh, something that might bother you psychologically, but uh, it's not going to actually cause any usability issues. So that's why I don't care. To me, it's worth the time that I save. But if you have time and the inclination to lube each stem with a paintbrush, then more power to you. Some people actually like, oh gosh. Okay, so if you have an accident, you drop a stem and you're not sure if you lost enough lube, like if it rubbed off of the stem when you dropped it, you can just shake it real quick again. Because the whole point of this agitation is the coating of lube on the walls of the container is going to be about the same thickness as the coating of lube on each stem. The whole thing's kind of normalized. All the surfaces, because of all the moving stems bouncing around against each other, evenly distribute the lube. Kind of makes it so that everything's kind of evenly coated inside the container. So if you drop some stem, put it back in the container and you shake them again. Then your your stem should be back to being good after that. As long as you don't like get a bunch of dirt on it or something when you drop it, that would be bad. Ugh, this is one of the most tedious parts of the job. Just putting these stems onto the springs. But you know, see like I was saying, everything in this container has about the same amount of thickness of coating of lube on it. So where the stems are touching the other stems, it's not like one's gonna rub, the lube's gonna rub off, all of the lube will rub off one stem and, and onto the other. No, it's not like that. You know, because they all kind of have an even amount of lube on them already, it doesn't matter if they're touching each other. But if they touch something else that wasn't in the container when you shook it, like if they touch something dry like your desk, yeah, they might transfer enough lube onto that dry surface that now the stem might not have as much lube as you want. Or, I mean, what really matters is it might not have as much lube as the other stems. Because what you want is consistency. So something a lot of people don't understand about this agitation method of lubing, whether it's bag lube or tub lube or whatever, is that uh, you achieve consistency. You know, it's physics. The, uh, you know, randomness of the bouncing stems transferring lube onto each other, it actually does evenly distribute the lube. And it probably a lot of people probably don't want to hear this, but probably results in a more consistent loop job than doing it the long, tedious way of painting each stem. So, even though it has its downsides, basically, which are basically just that it wastes more lube and that it uh, gets it on the cross so that it's on your keycap. Aside from that, though, I think you could argue that it might actually be, it might actually uh, yield superior results in terms of consistency and just the overall feel. 
there are some there are a couple of caveats to that so the center post of the stem it's not going to get coated um, not the not necessarily the post itself but the part of the center post that's uh, recessed into uh, the side rails there is not going to get much lube on it at all like the part that's way up in there where this where the spring touches like where the spring rests against the stem so that is overcome by the fact that I'm also lubing the springs thoroughly so if I wasn't lubing the springs it might be a problem I might have get some kind of creaking spring noise because the place where the the spring is resting against the stem wouldn't have grease on it but it's fine because the whole dang spring has grease all over it so, so problem solved so please if you do this if you decide to do this method then uh, thoroughly lube your springs don't do this method with dry springs ever in fact if you if you I would go so far to say if, if you don't lube your springs you're you're making a big mistake buddy it's lubing the springs is quite possibly on on a switch like this lubing the springs is quite possibly more important than lubing the stem because the spring is freaking noisy man now on some switches like ugh cherry retooled I don't know why they're so popular they're not that great in my opinion but I mean they, they sound cool I guess that's the main reason people like them but, but like on a cherry retool for example yeah they they really need the lube they're not that smooth stock but on a switch like this it doesn't need the lube for smoothness you're you're really doing it for the sound more than anything else but Oh, does it sound good. It is so worth it. You're going to sound so much better after this than they did before. And you know, I love lubing this way because you get top-notch results. For a much lower amount of time spent. I just, you know, with my life as busy it is, I wouldn't be able to lube switches any other way. Not, not, not if I'm, you know, I like to try a lot of different kinds of switches. Whenever something new comes out, I like to try it without lube, with lube, compare review it talk about it it's fun I wouldn't be able to keep up with that if I had to lube these each with a paintbrush there's just no way now the sad thing is some housings are are so not smooth that I feel like I need to lube them with with a paintbrush in addition to lubing the stems panda housings for example Jesus housings yak housings Sun Brown housings, Cherry Retold housings, Gateron Black Colored housings, those Utemu Sky housings, those are all housings that I feel like I, like, they actually benefit from lubing the housing with a paintbrush and also lubing the stem. So those, all those switches kind of bum me out a little bit because I, I usually end up paintbrush lubing the housing of the switch and the switch top and then I shake lube the stems so I end up I end up spending probably more time lubing the switches than most people do anyway because most people I think it's really common in this hobby for most people to just only lube the stem and to not even lube the housing so sometimes I end up spending more time lubing than than people doing it the quote-unquote slow way.
<laughs> Let's see. Sixteen. Wait, fifteen. <laughs> fourteen. All right, we're just about ready to put the switch tops on, except that. Uh, Earlier when I spilled those stems, it looks like I did lose a couple. So I need to make sure that, that I still have enough, even, even with those missing, or if I need to find them before we move on. That's weird. Where did they go? Two stems. Two stems missing. Must have bounced farther than I thought. Mm. Nope. That's not one of them. I don't want to lose any if I can avoid it. What? Whoops. She shouldn't even more careful. Okay, well this is actually. So it turns out I have exactly eighty-seven. If I just don't bother finding the ones that I've misplaced. So I think I'll just go ahead. And I'll worry about them later. Because 87 is the number that I, I mean, if I do, if I end up putting these in a TKO, 
actually have enough here, so I'll try to find those other two more stems later, I think. in there some more with the keycaps Oh well, I'm not going to look for them any longer, since I have enough. They'll probably turn up later, hopefully. <laughs> them. Jeez. Dumb. Okay. about that uh, little waste of time there. Yeah, that's not going to work. So one thing to know about agitation lubing is it doesn't really work with three stems. So. These last two switches, I'm going to have to hit them with a paintbrush real quick. Because the agitation lube, there's like a critical mass. It's like a number where if you have too few stems, it doesn't really work. If you lube too few stems at once, it doesn't work.
Hmm. Just do these two with a paintbrush. If I can find where I left it. Maybe I'll use this paintbrush. This one's good. about the same amount of lube on it as the other switches have. Okay, looks pretty good. All right, done with that little time-wasting detour. Now, put the top side. It's a little boring. Not much to show here. Just snapping the tops on. Do 
to do. Now I mentioned that uh, if you tub lube, you get some uh, grease on the cross. So one way you can minimize this is you can you can remove some of it with the toothbrush after you're done modding the switches and lubing them. So this is a Colgate toothbrush with a fine charcoal bristles. So it'll pick up some of that lube. And then you can wipe it. Then I wipe it on a microfiber rag. So you usually do like one row switches. Then I'll wipe. Then I'll do another row switches.
this just kind of makes them less greasy. This really helps minimize the uh, that negative side effect of having grease on the crosses. You can just remove some of it, most of it. There'll be a little residue, but it doesn't bother me. Oops, don't want to push them down when I do it. Doesn't work. Now the toothbrush has to have really soft bristles. That's why I use this Colgate charcoal type toothbrush. Then I hit it from the opposite angle, opposite direction. This is actually a lot easier when they're in the keyboard, but uh, since I have more switches here than they're going into the keyboard, I thought I'd just do this first in the switch tester. If it looks like there's still too much on the crosses, I could repeat this step after they're in the keyboard, but I probably won't. Right. Now, since it's hot swap, each time I stick a switch in, I need to make sure the pins look straight. Otherwise, I'll either break the hot swap socket or else the pin will get bent. Either way, the switch won't work. So, as you're going, just glance at the pins, make sure they're straight. If they're not straight, like this one isn't, bend them straight. Bada bing, bada boom. And if you're careful enough, by the end, all the switches will work. But in my experience, usually you miss a couple. Usually you have to pull one or two switches back out and straighten the pin. But usually they're salvageable. So I have had switches where the pin got bent more than once. And after being bent a few times, it broke. Then that switch housing was done. There's another one with a bent pin. Now, if you have, if you happen to have a leaf, you can transplant in from another housing that can fix that problem. But you know, usually, if you have another housing with a leaf in it, you just use the other housing. But uh, the reason I would mention that is because. It might actually be worth swapping in a good leaf if you've already got the switches lubed because that way you're minimizing your effect on the lube job. You know, swapping out the entire housing now you've the stem has transferred some of the lube. Either you've lubed the housing or else even if you just lube the stem, the stem by this time would have transferred if you've used these switches the stem might have transferred some of that lube onto the housing. So now after you go to a fresh unlubed housing, 
Now well, that switch is not gonna, the overall lubricity might be less because some of the lube has rubbed off onto the housing that you're discarding. So in that case, I would recommend just swapping the stem for a good stem. I mean, not stem. I would just recommend swapping in a good leaf and then maybe putting a dab of lube on the new leaf to try to make it have the same amount of lube that the other leaves have in the other switches. Because we're always looking for consistency. We're always looking to produce a consistent result so that the keys all feel the same. But this is, time like this is when hot swap's really nice, you know, and trying to test out some new switches it really saves you a lot of time. There's a good chance that these switches don't end up staying in this keyboard, but they're here for now. Give me a chance to see how I like them with lube, see how they sound, share some typing videos. One thing I like about hot swap keyboards, it's it's kind of a theoretical benefit because I haven't taken advantage of it yet, but in theory, one thing that's kind of cool about hot swap keyboards is you can try some switches out, lube them up, stick them in there, use them for a while, pull them out, and easily, easily sell them because, you know, they've never been soldered. So for most people, it's basically like buying a brand new switch. So it seems to me like they're, they'd be really easy to sell when they've just been used in a hot swap keyboard. No worries about the solder on the pins. And what, what kind of solder, how much is on there, any soldering damage, you know, none of that. You don't have to think about any of that. Okay, I'm not gonna bag these up until I know whether I have any failed switches. So, I'll keep, just set those aside for now. Wash my hands off, because they've got a little bit of grease on them. Just a tiny bit. Okay. Let's cap it up. Oops. <sighs> it's late and I'm tired. Oh shoot, I don't remember where I had these keys before. 
Uh, okay, let's see. I think I had... I think I had page up and page down first. Yeah, that sounds right. And probably insert there. Yeah, I think the row profile matches that that way. Okay. It should be should be right. Oh, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. Ho 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 ho. Preliminary results sound good to me. Oh, my Atlanta. Here. We are in good shape here, I think. Mercy. Oh my goodness. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh. yes. Wow. Love it. Isn't Lubing great? I mean, the results. So nice. Mm. I don't understand why anyone would not lube their switches. So much nicer. Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh man. Man, all right, let me back up the leftovers. Keep it safe. Hmm. What do I do with the bag? There we go. Just gonna bag up the leftovers to keep them safe. I use a wrist rest. So I'll do that. Let's see here. Sounding good so far. See how it sounds.
Nice. Uh, let me just see if, if all the keys are working real quick. fast though. Hmm. I'm tired. I give you lubed T1s. They sound great. I think they sound awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the flip side.